Melusine, Tamlin Lancelot, Remnant of the Dragon Albion, and my comedy avatar. But what about the Melusine of Fate Grand Order? How well does she compare to her mythological counterpart? And what grade would I give her depiction? Let's get into it. Quick warning, yes, I'm going to spoil Lost Belt 6, Avalon Le Fay. But since Lost Belt 6 came out just under six months ago on NA, I think this will be the last time I give a spoiler warning for it. If you haven't played it yet, you really should. Okay, moving on. Melusine is a Lancer-class servant, which, well, it's weird, because she doesn't really use a lance or spear-like weapon. In her first and second ascension forms, the weapons she uses are more akin to dual blades she keeps in a rather interesting way. Some kind of sheathed gauntlet? I've certainly never seen anything like it before. It isn't actually a proper weapon, but rather something she creates from her own body. The weapons she carries in her third ascension form do look more lance-like, but what about lore relevance? Well, she is given the name of Lancelot, even though the original Lancelot is either a Saber or a Berserker. Meanwhile, her other identities of Melusine or Albion don't really have classes that fit them. We will say more about that later. But the gist of it is, Melusine getting the Lancer class does seem a tad arbitrary to me. My guess is that since they already had Barghast as a Saber and Bavanshi as an Archer, they gave Melusine Lancer in order to make sure that all three of the Knight classes were covered by the three Tamlin. Or Fairy Knights? I don't care which, but I'm N.A., so I'll stick with Tamlin. Moving into Melusine's character design, we have two very distinct versions of the character, herself as a fairy and herself as a dragon. The fairy version of Melusine is found in her first two ascensions, with the first showing her armored and ready for battle, her armor being a lighter shade than Lancelot's, while her second ascension clothes are more for formal or non-combat situations. From having read through Lost Belt 6, we know that Melusine created this appearance for herself, using Aurora as a model. They don't look exactly alike, of course, but they have the same eye color and similarly long hair, I guess. Anyway, the fairy Melusine tends to look fancy and elegant, much like Aurora, though that's pretty much where the resemblance ends. When Melusine swaps into her third ascension form, either by choosing it to start with if you really like that costume, or by using her third skill, her form changes dramatically. She still has elements of her fairy form, but she now looks much more draconic. Her feet and hands certainly look the part, and she's also added those large wings as well. Also, the symbol that she featured on her armor in her first ascension, and her gloves in her second, reappear on her wings in the third ascension. This symbol looks an awful lot like Mash's shield, too. A subtle nod to Melusine being something like a round table knight, perhaps? Really, when you compare this form to her appearance as the Dragon Albion, this third ascension looks like an intermediate stage, an in-between of her transforming from a fairy into her dragon form. As for the dragon form itself, it is certainly different from your typical dragon, looking much more mechanical than reptilian. But it is also worth noting that Melusine is only a remnant, the left hand, of the dragon Albion. No doubt the full-sized Albion would be much larger and much more powerful, which is kinda scary to think about considering how blatantly overpowered Melusine is already. One curious thing about her third ascension design though is that there is a sort of clock motif going on. If you look at her wings, you will notice that they each have different Roman numerals upon them, with the right wing having Roman numerals counting from 2 to 7, while the left wing has them counting from 8 to 13. Maybe they decided to skip the number 1 and bump it up to 13? And taking a closer look at her two spears, they kind of look like the hands of a clock too, especially when you realize that the middle circle part where she holds onto them looks quite a bit like where the hands would attach to the face of a clock. Now, neither Lancelot nor Melusine have anything to do with times or clocks, but in FGO, the remains of Albion in proper human history are actually under the Mages Association Clock Tower. Clock Tower, clock theme on Albion's design, clever. To sum all of this up, Melusine has a rather interesting design, mixing elements of Lancelot's existing design, her own inspiration from Aurora, and a rather unique dragon design. It looks great, but has few links to existing myth. Getting into Melusine's skill set, her first skill is Dragon Heart, increasing her attack, reducing damage taken against her, and increasing her max HP for 3 turns, and a 30% MP charge on top of that. Yes, I know Melusine is blatantly overpowered. Why do you think I'm trying to Grail her to 120? I just need more Grails and QP. Anyway, Dragon Heart is an obvious reference to her draconic nature, with the skill acting like a really strong and unique mana burst. We don't exactly have an abundance of Draconic Servants in FGO to compare her to, with Sieg being the only other one I can think of. I'll go ahead and say this skill's alright. 
Next up is her second skill, Parry Dancer, which increases her star gather rate by an absolutely obscene degree and grants critical stars per turn for three turns. Oh, and it's also a star bomb on its own. This is Melusine's version of Lancelot's own skill, Eternal Arms Mastery, but also with elements of Knight of Owner added to it. Since Melusine has been given the name Tamlin Lancelot, it makes sense that she would adapt one of Lancelot's most notable skills. As for why the skill is Parry Dancer, this is Melusine's own change to Lancelot's skill. Being someone who was born strong and just creates the weapons she uses, Melusine doesn't really see much value in a skill that's meant to be for wielding all kinds of weapons. She thinks she's too good for that, and she has a point. So Melusine made the skill Parry Dancer instead, figuring if she absolutely had to have a skill like Eternal Arms Mastery, she could at least shift it to better suit her tastes. Melusine's third skill is, of course, Ray Horizon, a skill that, in her first or second ascensions, transforms her into her third ascension, gives a massive 100% MP charge at level 10, and a turn of invincibility. If she uses this skill in her third ascension, it still grants the turn of invincibility, but also a 30% increase to her MP damage for three turns, giving her great synergy with Oberon. Anyway, this skill is absolutely busted by allowing Melusine to be a Black Grail Looper, but what about its lore? This one is a little confusing to me. My understanding is that it is meant to symbolize Melusine's role as the dragon Albion, acting as the being that separates the outside world with the inner sea of the planet. She is the boundary, or horizon, that separates these two worlds. Which makes some sense since she came from that lake that you later find the spirit cave at which leads to the inner sea late in Lost Belt 6. As you might have gathered, this has more to do with Melusine's story in Avalon Le Fay rather than any mythology outside of it. Melusine's first noble phantasm is Innocence Erendite, whereupon, in her first two ascensions, she unleashes her twin blades, dashes forward, and cuts into a single target, increasing the damage that enemy takes for five turns, giving herself increased MP gain for three turns depending upon overcharge, and more critical stars. As the name suggests, this is Melusine adapting a skill from the original Lancelot into something she can use. Indeed, that's exactly what it's supposed to be, an attack that Melusine just took as part of her identity as Tamlin Lancelot. There really isn't more to it than that, but this makes sense because this isn't really Melusine's true noble phantasm, now is it? Melusine's second noble phantasm is Hollow Heart Albion, whereupon she takes to the sky, passing through a series of rings, and then unleashes a massive burst of light that wrecks all nearby enemies. This is her true MP, the one that she has in her third ascension when she shifts to her dragon form. As for the name, this is just my supposition, but I'm guessing this has to do with Melusine only being a remnant. Specifically, Melusine is meant to be the left hand of Albion, while the rest of the dragon rotted away, including the dragon's heart. Since a left hand obviously doesn't have a heart in it, we get the name Hollow Heart Albion. That's just my guess. Another thing, those rings that Melusine blasts through during her MP animation, if you take a closer look at them, they also have Roman numerals upon them, further reinforcement of that whole clock theme I mentioned earlier. Lastly, there's a notable Easter egg. One of Melusine's MP lines mentions Geoffroy and Fromont, which are two of Melusine's sons in the original myth. Actually, Geoffroy would kill Fromont. Hooray, fratricide. Anyway, while this MP is obviously more about the dragon Albion, we do still get that tiny little link to Melusine too. Melusine's craft essence is Aurora, featuring, well, an Aurora, over what appears to be the lake in Fairy Britain where the remains of Albion are located. This is, of course, a double meaning. Aurora isn't just the Aurora Borealis, not to Melusine. The CE text makes this clear, since it talks about Melusine's relationship with the fairy Aurora, who found her in the lake and who Melusine would serve, even more so than Queen Morgan. Melusine's affection for Aurora, despite her quite glaring personality flaws, is what forms the substance of the CE's text. Obviously, this is very relevant to Melusine as we know her in Lost Belt 6, but has no real connection to the Melusine of myth, never mind Lancelot or Albion. And now, we get into characterization. But before we really get into that, let's first do a brief rundown of Melusine's three identities and the lore behind them. I'm not going to say much about Lancelot since, well, he's going to get his own video someday, and it's only a persona Melusine adopts anyway. 
However, there is one notable thing I would like to point out. Lancelot is known as the Knight of the Lake. His last name of Dulac literally means of the lake. Now, why is he called that? Well, because as an infant, he was spirited away and raised by the Lady of the Lake, also known as Vivienne, who might also be Morgan Le Fay. But do you know what other being is also a water fairy? Melusine. Well, this just got interesting, didn't it? Getting into Melusine, she is a type of fairy creature found in fresh waters like rivers or lakes, with a female form as her upper body while the lower half is more akin to a two-tailed mermaid. She is a very old being found in European myth, primarily in France, and there are a number of noble houses in Europe that claim to be her descendants, such as the Lusignans, who were once kings of Jerusalem, and the Angevins, or the House of Plantagenet, the English royal family in the Middle Ages. Images of Melusine can be found all over the place, even in everyday items that you probably don't think twice about. Anyway, the story with Melusine is that a man named Raymond met her in a forest and promptly proposed marriage. She agreed, but on the condition that he must never try to see her on Saturdays. This worked quite well for a long time, with the pair having no less than ten sons. But one day, Raymond's curiosity got the better of him, and he decided to peek in, discovering Melusine's secret. Later on, when their son Geoffroy murdered their other son, Fromont, Raymond accused Melusine of being a serpent. Realizing that the promise they had made had been broken, Melusine promptly sprouted wings and flew off, never to be seen again except to discreetly take care of her two youngest children who were still infants. So, two things. First, a personal note, this Raymond guy seems like a complete jackass. I mean, they were happily married long enough to have ten sons, and since some of them grew into adulthood before the story ended, they were together for quite a long time. And yet, that wasn't good enough for him? He just had to violate the one thing Melusine asked of him? A day of privacy? Is that so hard? Then to add to that, he decides to blame Melusine when that fratricide happened. Yes, he was grief-stricken, but seriously? Did he try any self-reflection? Or does he believe himself incapable of wrongdoing? Based on Raymond violating his promise, I'm guessing the latter. Anyway, screw him. What's the second thing? Well, as I mentioned, when Raymond outed himself as a breaker of promises by calling Melusine a serpent, she grew wings and flew off. A serpent or reptilian creature growing wings? What are those usually called again? Oh yeah, dragons. Some versions of this myth even outright say that Melusine turned into a dragon, while others just say she was a winged serpent. So, uh, to review, our FGO character here is given the name Tamlin Lancelot, named after the Round Table Knight who was raised among lake fairies, such as Melusine, which is our character's actual name. Then, the original myth of Melusine ends with her turning into a dragon, like how our Melusine transforms into the dragon Albion. This is actually really, really clever. But what about the dragon Albion? This, unfortunately, doesn't seem to have any basis in real-world myth. Albion is actually the oldest name for the Isle of Britain, though its exact origins remain debated to this day. The concept of a great primordial dragon who ended up dying upon the Isle of Britain, or Albion, seems to be a creation of the Fate franchise. There might be a very vague link to the red and white dragons mentioned in the stories of Vortigern and Merlin, but those are two dragons rather than one. So to sum this backstory section up, while there seems to be some pretty clever use of the names of Tamlin, Lancelot, and Melusine, as well as linking Melusine to a dragon, there doesn't seem to be a dragon named Albion outside of the Fate franchise. Now, getting properly into characterization, we do have a slight problem when it comes to determining how accurate Melusine is when compared to her myth. Namely, that she isn't supposed to be Melusine in the first place. She's a Lost Belt character, not a proper history character. And so there being major differences between proper history Melusine and Lost Belt Melusine is kind of expected. Adjust your expectations accordingly. Melusine's story begins in the Lake District, where she is an unformed remnant of the deceased dragon Albion. Brought out of the mire by Aurora, the remnant takes the form of a lake fairy modeled in Aurora's image, and it is Aurora who gives her the name Melusine. Now, Melusine is a good name for a fairy found in a lake, so Aurora actually did pretty good here. I guess broken clocks and all that. From here, Melusine devoted herself to Aurora. Even after officially becoming one of Queen Morgan's Tamlin, her true loyalty was to the one who pulled her out of that foul lake. This devotion continued despite the fact that it became clear to Melusine that Aurora didn't think very highly of her, talking badly about Melusine behind her back, which is what led to that scene in the rain that Percival witnessed. Not to mention the fact that Melusine knew full well that Aurora was a real nasty piece of work, yet could not help but be devoted to her. In other words, Lost Belt Melusine was devoted to Aurora, while Mythical Melusine married that guy Raymond who turned out to be a jerk. 
Affection doesn't seem to work out well for either Melusine, does it? As for Melusine's personality, this is much more difficult to assess for the mythical version, but we can make some inferences. Another part of Melusine's mythical story is that she actually grew up in Avalon, brought there by her mother, Pressine. But as it turned out, Pressine herself had once gotten together with a human, only for that man, Elinas, King of Albany, or Scotland, to also do the whole peeping thing. Melusine and her sisters, irritated about what their father had done, decided to capture him and lock him away in a mountain. Their mother wasn't too happy about this, though, and so ended up banishing the sisters, and cursing Melusine to take her more serpentine form on Saturdays, which is how that part of the myth came about. So the mythical Melusine was an exile, isolated from much of the rest of the world, and likely had difficulty relating to anyone else. Well, that does actually sound a lot like our own Melusine, who puts up a front of being a serious knight, but then melts into an awkward goof outside of that. Being more dragon than fairy, she is also a unique being within the British Lost Belt, and is notably stronger than just about anyone except perhaps Morgan or Kernunos. Not Vortigern, though. Her ability to fly at supersonic speeds is a hard counter to the Abyssal Worm's ability to suck everything in, and it is how she was able to save Chaldea at the very end. But the fact that she stands apart from basically every other being in Fairy Britain means that she is fairly isolated from them, and Melusine's closest connection is an abusive relationship that she can't bring herself to break out of. As I mentioned earlier, we don't have a very good grasp on the personality of the mythical Melusine, but from what we can piece together, it doesn't seem too different. The Melusine of the British Lost Belt is clearly her own character, independent of proper history, and yet we have those curious links to the original lore, with both being lake fairies who find themselves in unfamiliar lands and whose only meaningful connection turns out to be rotten. Of course, there are changes, notably the fact that Albion is an island rather than some mythical dragon. But as a whole, I'd say Melusine's characterization at least has some good links to the original, even if, being a Lost Belt servant, she could get away with having those links be weaker. And now for the verdict. What grade would I give Melusine's depiction in Fate Grand Order? Well, it is alright. What we have is a mix of established lore from our world's myths about Melusine, and even that link to Lancelot, but much of the rest is a creation of the developers. That link between Lancelot being raised by lake fairies, which may have included Melusine, and then Melusine herself transforming into a dragon in her original myth feels inspired to me. That is not a chain of connections I expected to find, and it is pretty cool to see. There are enough parts where the designers clearly decided to add their own bits that it keeps Melusine from getting too high a grade. It's Albion not being a real dragon that hurts her most. At the same time, I don't think it would be right to be too harsh on Melusine since, because she is a Lost Belt servant, she isn't meant to be the proper history Melusine anyway. This one is a bit difficult. And so for a final grade, I am going to give Melusine, Tamlin, Lancelot, and the left hand of Albion a C+. I floated between various grades during the course of making this video. I actually was thinking as low as a D- at one point, but it was all the subtle links and her status as a Lost Belt servant that saved her. She was never going to get roasted, though. That doesn't seem fair to any servant who starred in Avalon Le Fay. After all, they suffered enough in that story. If you would like to learn more about another notable character from Lost Belt 6, check out my video on Oberon here. Until next time.